first of all, you know, I sat here yesterday and the emotional part is listen to a couple of y'all stories and I want to know, I want you to know that um, I felt you and I was, you know, really humbled and um, appreciate you letting me be a part of this. Now, with that out the way, <laughs> some of you probably wonder why is he here and how he got here and things of that nature. A few years ago, Wendy made a post and I replied and she made another one and I replied. And for the better part of it is, Wendy got to the part where she would say, you know, I was like, well, when is your next event? And she said, um, well, I really focus on women. I said, that's nice. When is your next event? <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, again, she was like, well, you know, Dr. Gallo, because first we went to Dr. Ricky and we went back and forth, Wendy and Dr. Ricky and they, and then she says, then she put a post in it that says that she's going to be in North Carolina. I live in Virginia. That's a three hour drive. That's like going around the corner for me. So I said, oh, I see you'll be in North Carolina. I'd like to come. Well, of course, she says, it's, women. it's a women's event. I said, that's nice. Are you going to turn me away once I get there or would you let me in? She said, well, if you determine, needless to say, it went from Dr. Ricky and Wendy to brother and sister, and I've been with you guys ever since. The so last year I was supposed to come, but it was a conflict of interest and conflict of scheduling, rather, and I got here this year, and I was making sure, and I told her last year I'll be there this year, so plan around it. Okay, how many of you heard the phrase, business of doing business? Okay. Understand that you can't have a business seminar without numbers, correct? So let's go with this. 20% of all businesses that start fail within the first year. 30% fail within the second year. 50% fail within the first five years. And 70% fail within the first 10 years. Okay, what does that mean? Simple. Don't do business with no one who's been in business less than 11 years. That way, they'll be around for you, okay? <laughs> Right? <laughs> now, but realistically, why do businesses fail? How many of you have ever said this? Well, I can't find clients. Okay. There's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. How can you not find a client? Okay? Now, how many say this? Well, I got to tweak my product or my service or I got to do this or whatever. Okay. In 1975, this man named Gary, Gary Dahl, started selling this product for $3.95. 18 months later, it was worth, he sold it, got $5,925,000, close to $6 million. Between then and today, he has made $27 million. He sold a rock, and he called it a pet rock. Okay? If he can sell a rock that you can pick up on the side of the street, and make $27 million, how can you say your product can't make money? Okay? Bill Clinton, for anybody who's a speaker, Bill Clinton makes $750,000 every time he stands on a stage. Barack Obama makes $400,000 every time he stands on a stage. Wendy told me I couldn't come, and I'm standing on the stage. <laughs> So let me tell you, there is somebody out there that want to hear what you got to say. Okay. So if you are in a business or want to start a business and it is not functioning or making the revenue that you want to do, I want you to say this. It's my fault. Okay. That's whose fault it is. Okay. When you look at the business of doing business, okay, it's simply this. Ready? There's five pillars in every business. And I don't care what business you're in. Strategic vision, we've heard that several times. People, we've heard that several times. Operations, several times. Marketing, several times. And Ashley, finance, several times, okay? That's it. I don't care if you have a lemonade stand or Fortune 100 company. It's built on those five pillars, okay? So, I'll tell you a little story. When I was in law enforcement, I hurt my back, right? So I decided I'm gonna get a dog to keep me company. 
city's gonna pay me to stay home, I'm gonna have some fun, okay? So, my neighbor, of course, what kind of dog I'm gonna get? Hello, a Rottweiler, you gotta get something big, right? <laughs> my neighbor says, I see some guys with the same type of dog be down at the park. I said, well, I don't have nothing to do, I'm getting paid to stay home. I head on down to the park. Guy starts sh sh um, showing me how to, they train in dogs and things of that nature. And I decide, you know, I like this. I got the dog, why not? Well, remember, I hurt my back, right? So I have to stay home. Well, if I'm staying home, I might as well go out to the park and I'm playing with the dog in the park. But like, you see how Wendy's been walking a little stiff? I've been walk I was walking like that too. So of course, I'm working on the dog really slow. To the naked eye, he's really involved in that dog. No, I'm in pain. <laughs> People come to me after a while, you know, I'm in the park and I'm play, working with my dog and trying to get the dog from the training. How much do you charge to train dogs? I see you train dogs. I don't charge, okay? Next time I go to the park. How much do you charge to train dogs? I see you train dogs. I don't charge. What's the common denominator here? Okay, third time somebody asks me. I don't charge, how much do you charge to train dogs? Well. I don't know how much I really, it depends on, now I have to come up with an answer. It depends on what you want, things of that nature. I ain't never run no business before. Okay, so I started working in people's dogs in the park. Oh, give me $20 if it was a female, $25 if it's a guy. <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't no fool now. I want my money, but I ain't no fool, okay. right? So, why I say this, $20 back then, that same program, then one guy came to me one day and asked me, hey man, I see you train dogs in the park all the time. How much money do you make training dogs? I had no clue. Why? Can you just give me the money, I put it in my pocket, and I go about my business. You give me the money, I put it in my pocket, and go about my business, right? So now it's time to start reading about doing business. What is the business of doing business? Okay, so now I put things in place. You gave me the money. How much time did I invest in training the dog? Well, I didn't know what, how to do it. So what I did was I took my yearly salary and divided it down right. to see how much did I make an hour in law enforcement. Okay. That's how much my hour is worth, right. at least in my mind yeah. back then, right? So we did that for a while. Now I start learning, okay, I gotta give the dog a treat. How much is it costing me to give the dog a treat? Okay, I gotta walk down to the park. Because my time with you starts when I'm at the park. No, it starts when I left my house to get to the park. Okay? Because as a consultant now, with my with Transcontinental, when you call me and say, come, when I go like this, lock my door, your time started. Okay? And your invoice will reflect that. So, with that, people, you know, I get to doing that after a while. I say, okay, this is working out pretty cool. But it was my side hustle. Right. That's what a lot of us do. Right. We have a side hustle. And it was my side hustle for about six years. Wow. Right? And then I decided, I learned, because I was, I was in law enforcement, but I had a good job, making good money. All I wanted to make overtime, just pull out a new warrant, hit the streets, I'm getting paid. I was good. Right? So it wasn't no problem with me. It was a side hustle. But then I understand, side hustles can be a business, okay? Fast forward now. Let's take those atoms. Strategic vision. What is your strategic vision? It is nothing more than the gap between where you are and where you wanna go, okay? So that's number one. What did I do? How did I develop my strategic vision? Came from this question, how much do you charge? Hey, hey. I can make money here. I started charging. Number two, people. The people in the park have dogs. The people at the vet have dogs. The people at PetSmart have dogs. The people at the mom and pop pet store has dogs. Yeah. Understand, if you have a dog, I'm going there. <coughs> if you have a friend that have a dog, I'm going there. If you have a business that sells services dogs, I'm going there, okay? Even at this time, there was a Woolworth. I'm dating myself. I'll be 55 next week, next couple of weeks, two weeks. So there was a Woolworth. Woolworth had a little pet section. Well, of course, Woolworth is y'all is Walmart today. 
I will go into Woolworth because I'm in New York. Stay, and I'll just stay over to the side. And every now and then, of course, because I'm a little dark in the shade, the little security boy come over and say something to me and I just show my badge, I get out my face. And you know, you go about your business. You're security, I'm the police. Get out of the way, right? Then, so after that, they realize, okay, come there. So now I'm where I'm at, still with the people. Because those people who are buying toys for their dogs have a dog. And I start talking to them too, okay? So you got your people. Let's go to operations. How much money do you make? I have no clue. How did you start tracking the money you make? What was the elements of it? Because it's not just the $20 or whatever. It was the elements, right? So that's the operations. We got the marketing. How did you market? At the time, again, all those elements of going to these different pages and putting myself in these different elements is how I market it. I'm being really simplistic. Then you got to the finance. What I realize is money coming in don't, don't always supposed to mean money going out. Like my friends right now who always talk about I'm broke, I'm broke, let me tell you something. There ain't nothing wrong with not having money as long as you don't owe nobody nothing. There's something wrong with not having money if you still owe somebody something. You see? Understand the difference. It's, it's great, right? So that's the real simplic version, OK? Now, remember I told you I started it with $20. Today, for that same thing, it's $1,800, OK? That's my cheapest program. And then it go up from there based on what you want. The business of doing business is simply this. Everything rise and fall on you. So if you are having the problems in your business, it's because the business owner did not develop an effective strategic vision. If you are having problems in your business, it is because the business owner did not leverage the people to produce his business or her business. If you are having a problem in your business, it is because the business owner did not develop and implement an effective operating operations system. If you are having problems in your business, it's because the business owner did not, <coughs> excuse me, did not develop and implement an effective marketing strategy. If you are having a problem in your business, it's because the business owner did not develop or incorporate an effective financial management plan. Now, how many people have heard this phrase before? You should always pay yourself first, okay? If you have a business, you need to pay your business as well. How I look at it is, if you have a business and you're not trying to maintain at least 25% of your business in cash on hand revenue, you are putting yourself closer and closer and closer to being out of business. Because there's gonna be somebody who's gonna say, I, got a deal. I can make a deal with you. We can make this deal right now. We need, to go, we need to have this amount of money. That's number one. Number two, the best time to borrow money from the bank is when? You have money. Most of the time I go to the bank, I say I wanna borrow, I'm gonna take out $50,000 loan or whatever. Whatever the number, they look at your account. Why you don't take it out? No, I take a borrow from the bank on my account. Mm -hmm. Okay? That way, I know the approvals don't go through. Because the bank say, well, he got the money sitting right here. I could always take his money back. But it always show that you got cash on hand also. Okay? I'm trying to go really quickly because I don't want Cynthia to yes. you know, chop me up. <laughs> but all right. but a, a couple of questions I heard that I definitely wanted to touch on um, again. And the first one was Desiree's question a few minutes ago. I almost bit my tongue in half when you talked about the priorities and your three priorities. Here are my three priorities. Here are my three priorities. One, will it make me money? Two, can it make me money? Three, how much money will it cost me? Okay, and I live my life like that for everything. 
okay? One, will it make me money? Two, can it make me money? Three, how much money will it cost me? Okay, because if something's gonna cost me money, okay, I have to think about do I wanna use it or not. For example, my savings account, to get to it, I have to drive 40 minutes and pay $24 in tolls at the airport. Trust and believe, if you ask me for money, it better be a really good reason for me to go out of my savings account to get you money, because I gotta pay to go get you money. What's the chance you're gonna get money? Very, very slight, right? See? So when you're looking at, like I said, the business of doing business, it's always, always your fault. Now, I started this with a part of emotion, and I really felt every one of you ladies yesterday. And then I said, now let's get that out the way. In business, I want you to be very passionate about your business. I want you to display some emotion in your business because you're not a robot. But ladies, don't ever be emotional about your business, okay? Because when it comes down to it, I don't care. I had a client with a valuation. We're doing a valuation situation. And she told me she want to sell her business for $2.5 million. Nice. Then we looked at the balance sheet. Those numbers said $870,000. But her and her husband has worked so hard for so many years. I don't care. And neither would anybody else. Because understand something. All those years you was working, you got something. Okay? It wasn't like you worked all those years and didn't get anything. You got something. So that's where your satisfaction should have, got, should have stayed, right there. When you got something. But what she told me was, well, you know, we sacrificed a lot for our children and we wasn't there for our children. And the person who's gonna buy it gonna say, I don't care, I'll give you 870,000. If you're lucky, because they might say, I'll give you 850, because I don't really know if you're gonna get right to 870 again, okay? So, what's the takeaway? Your business will rise and fall on the business owner. Stop making excuses and saying, my customer, my product. Because if this man can make $27 million selling a rock, and we had a lot of rocks out there yesterday, we could have picked one up and call it our own pet. <laughs> Thanks to my sister over here from, with Aura, okay? We can clearly say you have a product or a service that you can market and sell. It's up to you. Thank you very much. Do anybody have any questions? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question is like this. As a mentor, as a, a businessman, for me, you are a businessman because you know all the strategies and tools, and you are helping people and coaching them. One day I was talking with my sister, Wendy, <coughs> about how to make money. Okay. We all know the key of how to make money, but sometimes we have to. We have everything. We have strategy. We're good networking. We have, we have, but we cannot do that achievement to reach to make that satisfaction of our chiefer of uh -huh. Uh -huh. How you can support us in that? Okay. Simple. You either do one or two things. You either take no action or the wrong action. That's it. Okay. A lot of times, I've had people ask me straight up. How do you keep clients? Why? Because I'm black and white. It either it is or it's not. I don't have time to massage you. Oh, you feel so good. That's your man's job. That ain't my job. That is not my job to, to be all, all nice for you. That's your man's job. My job is to make sure you get paid. When you hire me, that's it. My job is to make sure you get paid. You want somebody to talk nice to you? Go, go shopping with your girlfriends talk to your man, that's not my job. It. And I don't try, and it's, and it's a clear line, right? So, if you look at, you have to evaluate, are you taking action? I'm assuming you are because you're talking to Wendy. Now, let's evaluate the action that you're taking, okay? Who are you going to talk to? What are you talking to them about? 
Desiree said something that, again, I wanted to bite my tongue and jump up like, you coming to me. You know, I really want to do business with you. I heard what you're doing. But Desiree's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a company to run. Hurry up. You want to give Desiree the Hope Novel version. Desiree want to hear the cliff notes. So she done turned off after two minutes. If you can't present your business idea in the time it takes this elevator to get from here to her floor, you short and you don't know what floor she's on. So you better get, you better hit right where she want to hear. So have, you should have done some research on her to find out what hurts her. Where is she hurt? Once you find out where she hurt, now you tell her, I got a, an analysis of alternative. I call it my, AO, my AOA. Okay, I have three possible solutions for where you hurt, but I'd like to present you the solutions. Here's my solution that I think is the best one for you. Let's discuss it. Now you got her attention because she said, you hurt, you giving me what hurt, what fix, you fixing my hurt. You come to her and saying, I got a business idea. You know what she's saying? So does everybody else that has to come to talk to me. Okay? So you got to understand something. Before you go talk to that person, find out where they hurt. And here's the good thing about it. They tell you, you know why? Human nature. Facebook, Zuckerberg has made mi billions of dollars because nosy people. People like to tell you their business. And then they go, why are you all up in my business? <laughs> right? Mark Zuckerberg, he capitalized on that. We say it all the time. I mean, people cook ugly food at home and then put a picture on it on Facebook. Like, we really want to see the ugly food you cook. So what I'm saying is research what the client that you want to go see, research where they hurt. Now come and present the solution to fix their hurt. We're talking about non-commercial We're talking about networking first. Okay, so. You have the office for services. You have network. You have base. You have everything. VVIP. Mm -hmm. But until now, with that network you have, even if it's excellent, some people step on you. It's not because you're weak. It's uh -huh. not because you're not good. It's not because you don't know what you're doing, but there is always some fellow who come to break you. Boom, 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 boom. Because now clearly, they... From that. But, but understand something. The person in that... We are in a networking meeting right now, and everybody is kumbaya -ing. How many people in here are speakers? Okay, I got one, I got one slot to give. Mm -hmm. Wendy says, you know what? You can give somebody your slot today. Pick one. How am I gonna know which one of y'all to pick? You're all speakers. You're all getting paid. Thank you so much for giving me this slot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You see? That's what I'm talking about. She take hers. But, but that's what I'm saying. She take hers. But, you, but again. You know what? This is the message what I want to show. But that's what I'm saying. You have to take action. You have to take action. Concurrence. We're stepping Intentional together action. each other. We're not helping each other. Well, well, we have to hand, not to break the hand. True. And I agree with you. That's totally. That's always bad. Mm -hmm. I step on you to show myself. You have to pull our hand and make circle. But and that's, make again, that's kumbaya. And it's, and it's a great system. And it's a great, in theory, but we all know that's not the everyday situation. She didn't wait to say who he's going to pick. She said, I'm the one to be picked. It's a difference. She didn't care about the rest of you sitting out there. Kumbaya. No, she got family to feed. No, I heard her speech. It was, it was good. But uh, it all, I am here. You in the back. I appreciate that. So we are that. in the world. We are not okay. in the business. But again, Kumbaya is nice. What did Desiree say? I'm here. I'm here. So it wasn't, well, let me see who he's going to pick. I'm here. And where did she stand? In front of me. I understand what you're saying, but the reality is not everybody that's holding your hand is taking you with them where you want to go. Next question. But understand, if you're in a cutthroat culture, get a bigger knife. People always say this to me. How do you fit all that on your plate? Simple. I go to the store and buy a bigger damn plate.
international markets, meeting your clients has different personalities and different needs. Everybody doesn't want that approach. Research. So, what happens is a lot of people say, Wendy, how many times did I tell you I want to work in Dubai, in the UAE? Okay, what's, what's the word you came out of my mouth? What's the answer you told me all the time? Learn to what? Okay, if you, if you don't know the culture, if you learn the culture, you'll know they are this way. Learn the culture and then go and fit in. Okay? Exactly, go and fit in. Okay, next question. Oh, yes. Right. So then when they go back to the house, they they're still the only one. one. Right. You know what I mean? So then that's different. You always know? someone will have to take action. There's Absolutely. Always someone yeah, so, yeah. Action. somebody's always going to be in the yeah. front. That don't mean you don't have people behind you. Yeah. Correct. You know, like I don't go into most, almost, I would say 98 of my projects today are strictly collaborative projects. I don't do anything by myself. Why? That's doing, the time you spend in the time to do the research and everything like that, to get ready for that. You are really putting yourself behind the eight ball. When yeah. somebody already started something, y'all get together and collaborate. Right now, for example, I'm collaborating on a project. And here's the advantage that we have. We have a, a nine-hour difference between him and I. So what he does is he do the work during the day. He emails me where he picked up, and then I take it over. Tomorrow morning, when everybody walk in, they're like, how did he do this all night? No, he have a wife at home. He sleep. I did the work when I left here, and I went home to the room. Okay. So we tag team. Now, here's the kicker. On that project, I'm making half of what my hourly salary, what, what my, 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 my um, source of resource would have been. Why? Because he called me up. He said, hey, look, I got this project. I'm going to let you know right now, I can't afford you. But I want you to work with me. Why? 12 years ago, he was my boss. Now, he has a consulting firm, and I have a consulting firm. He said, but there's a project coming up right behind it. That's over 35 million. We gonna get that. They already told me that. We just need to knock this one out the way. Oh, believe me, I would work with him for free. One, he's a good friend of mine. Okay, he's a good friend of mine. So he says, you need to send me an invoice. And I'm like, dude, I don't need no invoice. I don't, we don't even need that. He was like, from invoice from the perspective of contracting, handshaking. Yo, you told me on the phone, we good. I'm gonna send him a bill. Cause I, my account, I don't, Three things I'm afraid of, and I'm, I'm, Wendy's helping me overcome one of them, but I'm afraid of heights, I'm terrified of the IRS, and I don't like microphones, because I don't like public speaking, okay? So, but understand, but you gotta, you, you're gonna learn how to get over them. But the IRS, I make sure I pay someone to shield me from them. That's, your, that's her job, she, she takes care of that. And I don't have to worry about the finance and the balance sheet and stuff like that. She worries about it. I want to see it. She, and I'm educated on it. But I don't need to worry about it.